Hello, good evening. Welcome to the Granville Central Village School District Board of Education meeting on March the 16th. Um, I don't want anybody to take this the wrong way, but I'm really happy to see that everybody is practicing social distancing. <laughs> <laughs> um, please join me for the public meeting. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. to the approval of the agenda, we are going to strike the student reports and um, we have one addendum that uh, is a resignation for the end of the school year um, and I'll talk about that during the consent agenda. Uh, great. Thank you. Oh, wow. Great. So uh, Mr. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, um, uh, to take the role to approve the agenda. Please. Unless anybody else. Oh, motion. Sorry, motion. Be happy to make a motion to approve the agenda. This is as, as amended. As amended. As amended. Yeah. Second. 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 Any questions or comments? Okay. Ms. Deeds? Aye. Ms. Shaw? Aye. Mr. Wolf? Aye. Mr. Miller? Aye. Dr. Foreman? Aye. Okay. At this time, we'd like to entertain public comments. If you would like to uh, address the board, please um, stand up. <laughs> State your name and address and, and speak for three five minutes. Uh, would you like me to use a microphone? No, I, if you could be heard, it's, I think it's fine. Okay. It's kind of shoved in the corner. Yeah. Yeah. Problem being heard. Yeah. Okay. Good evening. Uh, I am Rush Denise, 3738 Grand Road, Grand Road. It's wonderful to see all of you tonight. Thank you for all your time. Uh, I'm here tonight along with one of my neighbors, Leslie Harrell. We are part of a group called Union Township for Public Safety. We are both residents in Union Township. We both live about 150 yards over the line from Granville Township. I've lived there for 18 years. Uh, and during that period of time, uh, our fire and emergency services have been provided by the Granville Township Fire Department pursuant to a contract with Union Township. And under the contract with Union Township, we pay the same 4.8 mills in property taxes to Granville Township that Granville Township for that fire service. We've been extraordinarily happy and pleased with that service, uh, even though I've fortunately never had to call them, uh, and hope never to call them. But it's nice to know they're there. Um, about two years ago, the Union Township trustees started rattling their saber uh, about canceling the contract with Granville because they felt uh, publicly, or stated publicly, that the Granville Township Fire Department would be paid too much on a per-run basis versus the other service provider within the Union Township, that being the fire department from the village of Hebron. Um, the fire department from the village of Hebron receives far more gross dollars uh, in their contract with Granville Township because they make fewer calls to the Union Township, which was paying, being paid an amount that was apparently offensive to those trustees uh, on a per run basis. My response to that, and many of my residents were, I don't care what it costs on a per run basis. Again, I hope never to have to call them. It's just like insurance, but I know that when I call them, they'll be there. Through a period of public hearings that went on for about two years, the township trustees ignored the uh, very strong uh, views of all of the residents who came to express their views within the township. Ultimately made a decision to form a fire district, put the fire chief of Hebron in charge of that fire district without uh, considering anybody else uh, for that position. Um, and the contract with Granville Township Fire Department has now terminated. So all of our tax dollars are being diverted uh, over to the fire district and being paid to the Hebron Fire Department. All of that's important to me as a resident of Union Township. It's not really relevant to any of you unless you're a resident of Union Township. But what is relevant is that a number of Granville, you know, Granville School District buses, school buses, transport children from Granville schools every day within Northern Union Township on the roads that were formerly provided, formerly serviced by the Granville. Um, now, I don't want to mislead because at the moment, the Granville Township Fire Department, even though they don't have a contract, even though they're not being paid, they're being compelled to provide services for free, the same services that they were paid 4.8 mils for on an annual basis, which is about $300,000. Um, 
they're being compelled to provide those services for free at the moment because the fire chief of the fire district named Granville as the primary provider when he turned in his information to the 911 center. Without Granville's consent, without Granville's permission, and certainly not without uh, Granville's agreement. Um, so when a 911 call comes in in Northern Union Township, because the fire chief designated Granville, Newark, he, and Southwest Lakeland as primary providers for fire service, all four of them get a call, which may mean all four of them show up to an accident. Uh, Granville has taken steps to try and remove themselves from that call service. Newark requested and was granted relief from that call service. So at some point, it's apparent to us as residents of Northern Township that Granville won't be providing those services any longer to Northern Union Township. Again, going back to the relevancy issue. December 6th of 2018, Randall School Bus with about 45 children on board passed my house going towards the Stone Creek subdivision was hit by a vehicle, uh, a, a car driven by a young lady. Fortunately for everyone involved, it was a minor accident. There were no significant injuries. The 911 call came in. Granville responded and was on scene in less than five and a half minutes with seven emergency personnel and three units. If Granville hadn't been available to provide that service, the call would have gone to Newark, which under most estimates from first responders is about 14 to 15 minutes away. Fortunately, as I said, there were no injuries, but the school bus driver reported at the time that he feared that there could have been a rollover accident, that he could have rolled into the culvert. So if, if you would envision what would happen, what could have happened in what would be a mass casualty accident, the fact that Randall was on the scene within five and a half minutes with seven highly trained personnel in one of the highest rated fire departments in the state of Ohio, uh, to provide emergency services is very reassuring to me as a parent and a resident. Uh, and it's relevant to all of us who live not only in Northern Union Township, but all of us who have children in Granville schools, all of us who travel the roads of Northern Union Township. Uh, Union Township Fire District has taken steps, they say, to provide additional coverage by creating or building a substation out on 37 south of the railroad tracks. Um, that substation is not permitted uh, for use yet. There are fire trucks parked occasionally outside there. And honestly, if, if they were staffed, they could probably respond to an accident in the same place that that school bus had an accident in less time, by marginally less time, than what Granville would respond to. And keep in mind, when Granville's new fire department is open within the next year, Granville will be at least 90 seconds closer to our location. Uh, but the Union Township plan for that substation is to staff it with two part-time fire uh, Granville, for example, on any EMS run sends three firefighters, three emergency personnel, one to drive, two to provide emergency services. Union Township's plan is to drive two personnel. Uh, and the personnel could take either an EMS unit or they could take a fire truck. But under all national standards, if they got called to a fire and they took the fire truck and they were the first ones to arrive, they can't go into the fire. They can't go into the fire with they only have two people there. It's not really so it's inadequately staffed, it's inadequately budgeted. There is a budget, there, there actually is no budget that they've been able to produce since they formed the fire district. Um, they don't have a plan for success. They don't have a plan for emergency services other than trying to propel Granville's fire department to respond for free. That's not sustainable. That's not placing public safety first. That doesn't value life safety services. So as the residents of Northern Union Township, we petitioned, we organized and we're filing petitions and gathering signatures to present to the Lincoln County Commissioners uh, our request that the County Commissioners redraw the lines in Northern Union Township to match the Granville School District lines, move everything within the Granville School District lines into Granville Township. This is our only option. We're not permitted under state law to recall the trustees. We're not permitted under state law to have any sort of initiative. Our only option is to ask the county commissioners to redraw the lines. In the interest of public safety, we're doing that. So we're at the process now of gathering signatures. We need several thousand signatures, both from Union Township and from Granville Township. As you may have read recently, we now have the full public support of the Granville Township trustees. Uh, I'm confident we're going to get full public support from other public officials uh, as we go about this, because it's simply the right thing to do. It matters for public safety. It matters for public service. It matters for the children that ride those school buses on Northern Union Township roads every day. 
So I'm here to request that you would consider our, um, our position and that you would endorse our request to have the school district, excuse me, to have the township line redrawn and move that northern portion of Union Township which matches the Granville School District lines into Granville Township, which would then place Granville Township in charge of all of us. We would actually bring that tax money that's being diverted away from Granville Township and not used for our, for our benefit, bring that tax money into Granville Township. It would be financially fair, it would be financially reasonable, it would be a freedom overall to Granville Township. Uh, the money that we're bringing in tax revenue will far outstrip the cost that will be incurred in this in the Township, and it will serve public safety. In addition to, we fully expect it will be an example of good governance as opposed to bad governance that we've experienced in the North Union Township. So I would respectfully request that you would publicly endorse our initiative to move the school district, to move the township line from the school district and bring it into Randall Township. Thank you for hearing me out. I appreciate it. If you have any questions, I'm happy to respond as well. Thank you. I'm actually going to talk a little bit while Glenn gets the uh, projector going because um, I want to show you some examples of what some of the things that we're doing. So obviously this has been a crazy week. Um, I think we've adjusted, readjusted, adjusted, readjusted 25 times um, with new information related to the coronavirus and um, what we are going to be doing um, for three weeks and then potentially longer. Um, we anticipate it to be longer uh, as far as providing education to our students in Granville schools. So um, we are, as of tomorrow, going to be providing online education for our students. Um, that is looks slightly different K-1 than it does second through 12th grade. Um, second through 12th grade, people have Chromebooks. The students have Chromebooks. So they are going to be utilizing our learning management system, Schoology, to get materials, get uh, uh, resources, content delivered, assignments delivered, assessments delivered in that format. K-1 and 2, it's going to be emailed directly to parents um, so that parents can utilize that information to provide the uh, educational experiences to their students. But what I wanted to do was just, you know, this has been very difficult to see the path that it's taking. And so we've asked our staff to adjust, readjust, and adjust again. And I wanted to, you know, publicly comment that I, I am so appreciative of the work that they've done. They have been dedicated to trying to provide the best experience possible, even though that they know that it doesn't replace what happens every single day in, in the schools. So what I wanted to do is just give you an example of what my fourth grade team um, shared with me today as far as, you know, a way to connect with our students. So Glenn, if you could hit that. Time. 
Workshop's going to be split up into two sections, a must-do and a may-do. And um, Mr. Mellencamp's going to show you a little bit of what that looks like in Schoology. Hello, good afternoon. Um, let me find it really quick. So I'm going to click up here on Schoology to show you guys what it's going to look like. So you'll click on your courses, and then you'll click on fourth grade math. Um, once you click on fourth grade math, it'll take you to folders. Now the folders are divided up into weeks. Um, you won't be able to see them necessarily uh, all the weeks because they'll be published on certain dates at certain times. So you'll click on week one. Uh, tomorrow is Tuesday, March 17th. So at 9 a.m. this will be published. You can click on Tuesday, March 17th. The first folder will have the introduction for the day. Like Mrs. McCallister said, you'll have some type of, you know, introduction or uh, learning targets for what we're going to be studying that day. And you'll click on mini lesson. Uh, your mini lesson will be a video or a us or Khan Academy or something teaching you the content for the day. Um, if I click on this link for that video, you'll notice that sometimes you get this frowny face, which is completely okay. It just means it can't open up the video in Schoology. You have to click up here and it'll open up a new browser, okay? to watch the video. So again, if this comes up, that's not a bad thing. It just means you have to click up here on it again so it shows up. Up here are some more tabs. Sorry, we have five minutes to do a video, so it's gonna be pretty fast. So up here are some tabs um, where you click on week one. I can go back to week one. Uh, it'll show me for that week. Um, I can also go back to Tuesday. Um, and then in workshop, you have two more folders in workshop. Like we said, you have a must-do folder and a may-do folder. Must-do is stuff that you need to do that day, um, and may-do is uh, extra things if you want to get some more practice. So now we'll go back to some science stuff. Hi, everyone. Um, science looks a little bit different. So you will get a folder uh, assigned to you at the beginning of the week, and then you will have until Friday at midnight to complete what's in it. Maybe watching a video or doing an experiment or doing some reading or a combination of those things. But we're trying to keep things fun and exciting for you. Um, we do also want to let you know that assignments are going to be given at 9 in the morning. And then they won't be due until the next day at midnight. So you'll have almost 48 hours to complete everything. But every day you're going to get some new assignments. We also just want to say, use your Chromebooks the way you're supposed to use them. The expectations that we have in class are the same ones we have for you here at home. You can use your sanitizer, you can wear your hood all you want, Two on the couch. take your brain yeah. everything you need. Let's do some great learning. Now what's great is they can't turn I don't it know how to close it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, how do you stop this? Wait, it's pond we have to pause it. <laughs> so I think that is and I, I can probably share another twenty examples, but we're trying to keep this. But what I wanted to do was kind of show that one, our teachers do miss our kids. They want to be in front of them. They think of them as their own children. And I think that shows. Um, I read a letter that Mrs. Snyder said to or sent to her kids that she woke up this morning and she just felt devastated that she wasn't going to hear all the beautiful voices that she hears every single day. So, I mean, it's tough on everyone, but I think those things are going to be the shining examples of how we come out of this as a community. So um, just wanted to give you a, a little glimpse of what we're trying to do to maintain, maintain some normalcy uh, during this fluid, unprecedented time. So any questions about what we're doing and how we're doing it? I think it's fantastic, right? I think it's really important for a number of reasons. I think a, a lot of us are really struggling. Like, what can we do? You know, and like, you know, if the result is like, oh, I can check the news ten times a day, that doesn't really move things forward, right? Or get you out of it, right? And I think for kids, especially, having something to go to that's got some regularity, right? It's like, oh, this is what I can do to help, right? This is what I can do. I can make this happen. I think that's super important in those times, 
I think it's going to be great, you know, for as long as it lasts, right, to kind of get into that mode and so forth. And the other thing I really liked was the little picture in the corner of the teacher's faces, yeah. Yeah. right, because this is going to be a time where social interaction is going to be different, right, but these kids know that those people care about them, Right, and then see them every day, or see them those lessons and things like that, and finding a way for kids to interact amongst themselves through the school mechanisms and stuff is going to be really critical because there's just all this baggage associated with what's going on. Right, that finding ways to keep that interpersonal connection with those that we love and trust is going to be super important. So, thanks to you and the staff for doing all of that. Right, and I'm sure that you know I don't have any specific questions about how it's going to be done, or what it's daily or weekly, or when things are due, or how they're due, because that's evolving. Right, in the true sense of a project. Yep. Right? But um, it's going to be hard, yeah. you know, because I mean, it's hard not to have that interpersonal contact from the student's perspective or from the teachers. Right? But we got to get through it, right? Because I think that, you know, we're really defined so much as a school district, right? I think that's, you know, we're going to build things of ourselves as our schools and our, you know, the, we, we think of everybody that's in the Grandville School District as part of the family, yeah. right? And so, you know, keeping that connection is going to be super important. I think we've got a, a neat opportunity to show that leadership, you know, and show that here's what kids can do to keep doing this thing. So well, that's I, great. I said that to our high school staff this morning. The schools are the calling force. Sometimes it doesn't feel like that, yeah. but we really are in our community. So the, as much as we can kind of project um, a calm atmosphere moving forward and a connectedness, the better everyone else is going to be. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah. I think this, as well as some of the um, online resources that we're seeing as parents, yeah. is really helpful for um, for thinking about what you're getting when you think about how much you invest in the schools. And we talk a lot around levies, around how much we have to pay for the schools and our taxes. And um, but now we get to see exactly how much the teachers care about the kids and what they're actually doing and all the different resources that we can access because we're part of the brand bill. It's really helpful. Well, and, and if this board hadn't committed to moving to Chromebooks, oh, yeah. we would be in a very, very different situation than we are right now. Very different. So I think, you know, a little bit of that um, foresight and, and progressive perspective has helped. What are we able to do for families who don't have so we have, in the list of information that we sent out to parents, there are a couple of providers that are offering free connectivity. So Sprint, um, Spectrum, <coughs> Sprint is offering free Wi-Fi wi hotspots. Um, Spectrum is actually, will come and install um, Wi-Fi in, in a location if you qualify. So um, we have some of those resources, but if someone does not have connectivity, can't use either of those resources, we have the ability to, to help them out as well. We just ask that they contact us. Um, we are also, we have reached out to um, students on pre-introduced lunch to their families, and we are providing um, enough food for at least two weeks, if not three, um, through a pickup service. So we're trying to handle that as well. We do not have the same issues that a newer has related to food service, but if we have the ability to help them out, we will. So. I appreciated all the upfront information, like if, you, if your Chromebook goes wonky, <laughs> that, that you're not, you know, left high and dry, and that, you know, the district right. has plans in place for, for fixing those things as well. So, um, I, I've been very pleased with all of the um, uh, proactive information going out um, over the past few days. So thank you for staying on top of that ever-changing what other kind of resources do you need to reallocate or maybe from us to, because there are going to be parts of the organization that are stressed with all these Chromebooks and internet access and you try to utilize new tools and things like that. How can we, the like, one what thing can we do to support any yeah. adjustment there if needed? I think the one thing that we are going, we have talked about is, is the break decks for Chromebooks if we have a higher level of breakage um, and how can we respond to that and so Glenn and I and and the team have talked a little bit about that. But I think in general, what we're going to be doing is more what can we scale down to save money um, so that we can save it over time. Um, so thinking about, you know, how are we going to you know, use our bus fleet? And mm -hmm. How are we going to set temperature points? And all those types of things to try and scale down so that we 
are being fiscally responsible through this process. But if we have to reallocate some dollars to a purchase, you know, uh, to somebody who can do break fix and bring them in temporarily, we will do that. Great. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Great. You're on. This first graph um, is really just to kind of track the contingency 
and how much we've actually spent compared to budget. So our contingency balance is at uh, 254,000. And um, you can, we'll be able to track this from month to month as the dark blue bar, which is our actual expenditures, um, gets, I guess, even with the blue bar and try to keep that contingency, conserve that as long as we can. about this quite a bit last month um, but just want to show the really the detail here uh, from a transparency standpoint we felt it was important to show this every month um, and the one item to highlight here is the change order number two um, and we'll actually talk about that as a later uh, agenda item but just wanted to bring that to your attention um, mm -hmm. as well construction details. So here's where you can see um, exactly what components of the construction itself are public versus privately funded. Um, and because a majority of the work that's happened so far has been related to the bleachers, more of the public portion has been spent. But that, as we've looked at from a total budget standpoint, will level out. It's just based on the timing of um, the different components of the project. shows actual expenditures, um, private versus public. And the second one shows more detailed um, expenditures of all uh, the public and the private combined. And this is uh, not here in the PDF, but on the actual website is interactive and so you can drill into each of these uh, little slivers of the pie for more detailed information. So that's publicly available as well. And then just the last page is our cash reconciliation for the month that the auditors like for us to include. <laughs> Any questions? I'm assuming construction will slow at some point. Just because everything's we, no, go we, ahead. Uh, we don't anticipate that actually. Okay. Um, you know, we, we asked the question last week, will we have any procurement issues of materials and most of the things that were on hold so to speak have come in so we are they are working as fast as possible right now while we have good weather um, if if someone comes to the site that is new that is not one of the Robertson employees then you'll see a little bit of a halt until they answer certain questions um, just like see at a nursing home or any other place uh, but Robertson has you know, provisions in place to make sure that they can continue to operate so we do not anticipate a slowdown in the construction process which is good mm -hmm. that was a big concern okay uh, next is board policy update. So we've received the, the next round of policies from OSBA. And so I'm just going to kind of briefly run through the list um, and some of the, the um, why certain things have changed. Uh, executive sessions, students were taken out of the first reason why you can go into executive session. They are actually in covered under the fourth provision, which is anything that is required to be um, kept confidential under FERPA. So they're actually underneath that provision, so they took them out of the first um, example out of board policy. Um, the next item that we'll be changing is um, the minutes. They took out some of the uh, 
extraneous language in the policy and put full and accurate minutes must contain sufficient facts and information to permit the public to understand and appreciate the rationale behind board decisions. So they took out some other language that was, I would say, more confusing and put that clarification statement in. Any clarification or change on the um, use of video or audio recordings for minutes? No, not right now. Seems like there was not <laughs> Wouldn't be surprised if things change, honestly, as a result of yeah. the current situation. The attorney, de attorney general would come out and say, um, you know, board members and other folks can participate in board meetings um, via electronic means, which is very progressive to do. Yeah. So we'll see if any of that actually sticks. Under staff conduct, um, the State Board of Education approved the new licensure professional code of conduct, so they included that language in our staff conduct policy. Um, that is a result of the State Board of Education's updating of that language. Um, also related to that is staff-student relationships, um, so that is a policy that aligns with the licensure professional code of conduct, so the language that is included is in alignment with the new uh, licensure code. Um, the career advising policy actually complements the, the requirement, now I'm going to talk about the graduation requirements. So one of the, the big policies that we have to approve is the graduation requirement and um, what to do with a student that is not on track to get a diploma. They have to have a specific plan. So that's also in this policy review. Um, a career advising is to supplement students' graduation plans in accordance with the law. So there's two policies that are related to that. Um, in the hazing and bullying policy, there's a sentence added about discipline procedures will not infringe on any student's right under the First Amendment to the Constitution of the United States. So I'm not sure what the legal reason is for that additional language, but apparently it, there is a reason because it is a required policy. So um, that really, uh, other than that, it's related to graduation plans. So in the very near future, probably in April, maybe May, uh, we will have a presentation outlining our entire graduation plan, including what seals we've created um, so that our students can find a pathway to graduation. Most of our students will follow in the typical plan, um, but we will have a route for every child to find a path to a diploma. So those are kind of the policy updates. Any questions? You'll have a second read in April before they become board adopted. And the, on the first um, <coughs> one that you mentioned, is that just cleaning up a redundancy about uh, the students or less? Yes, students. yes, it's a redundancy. So um, it is an appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, compensation of an employee, official, or the investigation of charges and complaints against an individual, but they used to have student in there. So now they've left it to matters requiring to be kept confidential for federal law and statutes. That's where we have as any student. Uh, interaction. Yep. Can you just send around the list? What's that? Can you just send around the list or did you yeah, send around the list? Yeah, I did. Yeah, okay. But, but yes, I can, yeah. I can circulate that again. Okay. Yep. I was just trying to be brief. No, no, that's <laughs> totally fine. I just like, you know, yeah. I'll go for a second read. I just sort of. Yes. The we all have yep. uh, a list of the fun. And um, can we send the light? Yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see who's in the crowd? I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still here. Yeah. Um, okay. Any other additional public comments at this time? No? Okay. Let's move into um, board discussion. So let me uh, frame the board discussion a little bit because we did put Union Township down as a discussion item. Um, obviously, you heard comments from Mr. Janice. Uh, but I, the board uh, president had requested us getting information about this issue prior to uh, this meeting in order to frame uh, some level of support uh, for this effort that is a grassroots effort from the people that reside in Union Town North Union Township that um, also are a part of the Granville Schools boundary. 
So we, in advance of this meeting, developed a, a resolution of support um, that you know the board president will read. But um, I, I think it's important for any questions to be you know, discussed as far as you know what this board is is basically supporting, which I think is a pretty compelling case in the interest of safety and welfare of our students. So. Um, as, as your superintendent, I am fully supportive of that resolution and believe that that is in the best interest of the aggregate community. I always, I, you know I don't sit on the fence. I usually give you my opinion. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that this is uh, something that needs to be addressed. So I believe it needs to go to the county commissioners and I believe it needs to move forward. So I would um, frame it. Normally, we just discuss amongst ourselves, but I think if we have questions for um, our union council from residents, Russ, um, and, um, Leslie. Leslie, I knew that actually, I didn't know that. I mean, um, but I think we could go ahead and ask them sure. questions if we had um, questions for them. So, um. yeah, and, and I think it comes down to you know, we've got students on our buses traveling in that area. I, I have such great confidence in the Granville Township Fire Service. and. There will be a new substation. It sounds to me like it will be significantly understaffed to be able to deal with, you know, a, something that happens on a school bus. It's not one or two kids, right? That's a, a bus full, right? So I think that should be our primary focus. And I really understand that that's going to be compromised significantly in the context of the new, you know, potential substation. So I, I'm supportive of it. I think also, you know, again, our community is kind of defined by our schools. In it. Right, and we welcome those from other communities, whether it be New York or Keene or Union Township, as, a, as part of the family to some extent. Right, but in the cases of communication about all kinds of things, you know, the, the, the more that we can have everybody at the table, the better. Right, and I think you know our village and townships do a great job trying to work together on all kinds of issues relative to you know, development and growth and roads and supporting the schools. And the more we can unify those boundaries, right. Or we can all be at the same table when it comes to complicated discussions about taxes and services and those kinds of things. So I think there's a real value to that. And I don't want to, you know, belittle the respect of the legacy of Union Township, right? There are people that have probably lived there their whole lives, right? And I don't want to be taking that identity away from them, but I hope that the identity of the Granville School District that they've always been a part of is as important to them and, and can be supported. So I'm very much in support of it. I think it really allows us to, again, cleanly define borders. It allows us to you know, manage things in the future as we think about growth so that our community has similar standards, right, to protect us from things of, you know, problems that could cause us to have to invest capital or, you know, adjust the school district in some way. This will just, you know, facilitate those communications, and I think it's a great thing. But I'm, I'm curious if there's others questions or other kind of things. I, yeah, I agree with you know, what Michael Thomas said. I like the idea of um, a continu continuity of care across the district for all of our students, right? So that we don't have to worry about, you know, whether a certain part of our school district is getting a different level of service um, than another district. And, you know, it, everybody in the district should be of interest, it should be, um, should care because, you know, your kids go and they play at, you know, um, houses that are in this, you know, piece that we want to annex, and you know, you would want to have the same level of um, services, you know, when your kids are wherever they are in the school district. So, um, I, I think it's a great opportunity to, again, like we did with the GRD, right? Like we we extended it to be contiguous with the school district, so that there wasn't any confusion about, you know, you know, who pays what and who's, you know, votes for what and things like that. So, I think it's another opportunity for us just to um, have. Um, the, the school district all together in, you know, under one, you know, level, leader, you know, area of leadership. So, um, I think it's a good opportunity to move in that direction. Uh, so. I agree. I, it's a former Union Township resident, but it, it was, I mean, we lived there, I think, 16 years before we moved into the village. Um, as was mentioned earlier, I always felt good knowing I had the Granville Township Fire Department or EMS squad was available and it, it does worry me some there's lots of questions about what this new district will do how they will do it 
And I think for something as important as this, coming as a school board member, those kids on the buses, as we mentioned, I want to know that an established, a well-established professional organization, fire department, is going to be there. And hopefully, we don't, we don't need that, but knowing that they're there, um, I commend uh, the folks in Union Township for, for getting together and, and making it a priority, because I, I think it is one. So I'm 100% for this resolution. Yeah, I agree. I think you all have done an amazing job organizing and also getting information to us. I've been keeping track of this through, you know, uh, through people, but also through the local media, and that's been really helpful. So I'm wondering just what, um, is there a time frame for the commissioners? Is there a time frame for you? <laughs> there is. Um, there's, there's nothing, uh, there's nothing required by law for the commission. This is, as far as we can tell, relatively unprecedented, even though it's, it's an option under the law. What matters is, from a Grandwood Township perspective, the switch, if it's to happen, needs to happen before October 1st, which coincides with the next tax collection year, so that the millage can be adjusted appropriately. Otherwise, <coughs> the millage wouldn't be adjusted for a year following, and Grandwood Township would receive those proceeds. For the services that we provide. So we feel, um, we always feel a sense of urgency, especially because we're concerned with our fire and EMS service. Um, and we are making a push now to recruit additional people because it's very labor intensive to get out and gather signatures. Uh, we'd like to have that done in the next six to eight weeks, although current events make that a little hard to predict. Um, um, but, but effectively, we need to make sure that we're in front of the county commissioners before the end of summer so that they can consider and uh, make a decision. And if they make a decision, that decision can be put into uh, action before October 1st. Thank you. Yes, Commissioner Bowman. Thank you. Um, as a current Union Township, temporarily current Union Township resident, who has uh, attended too many Union Township meetings and listened to the trustees ignore any rational argument, uh, trying to dissuade them from making this misstep. Uh, I think this can't happen too soon. They, they are clearly off the rails and don't vote me here. <laughs> 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 the people who are watching, I'm not worried about. <laughs> 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 I don't want to be Kevin Bennett. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank two people banning that substation cannot go into a fire until then, but they can't also call for help until they actually get to the scene, and then they can call for help, but that adds another 10, 15 minutes, depending on who they call, right? So it's, it's Houston cops. <laughs> it is. So it's um, a little bit, yeah. It, it is. It's fr as a resident, it's frightening. I, I do want to make <coughs> one thing very clear. This is, this is not and never has been about the quality of the firefighters and responders within the village of Hebron Fire Department. They're perfect professionals. They do their jobs well. Um, we have no complaints. Um, it's all about the leaders in the township and now the fire district not having a plan, not having a budget, 
not having any financing to support a budget and understaffing uh, a critical need so that residents in northern two community townships have their have their safety put at risk. It's, it's clearly an absolute leadership issue uh, of folks who ignored consistently the overwhelming wishes of the community and have now placed us in danger. Thank you for listening. Can I ask yes. a question? Have you, have you had any initial contact with the county commissioners? Mm -hmm. We, we engaging them in what you're doing, that it's going to be coming. They certainly are aware. Okay. Um, they're they're uh, they're aware on, on several fronts. They, they clearly monitor the news. They clearly monitor local events. They're in touch. There, folks have spoken with them individually. Um, I will say that there was a there was a meeting of the county commissioner in January last week, I think, um, where the Granville Township trustees went before the county commissioners to inform the county commissioners of the, uh, the absolute gamesmanship that we've been undertaken by the appointed fire chief from the community township uh, in refusing to turn in accurate 911 cards when the transition from Granville to Union Township was first supposed to occur. And the fire chief was re reported by the county EMS director, the 911 director, to have made comments that his sole objective was to embarrass Granville. Not to get turned uh, and on one card to ensure continuity of public service, of emergency service. So they were advised then of that instance. If they weren't aware of it, then they are. They were then. Um, the uh, county prosecutor addressed that now. Um, and they're aware on an ongoing basis. I, I would not tell you that we have any uh, assurance at all that um, that our request will be favorably or not. Uh, as I said, we're, we're breaking the ground. This is not something that anybody wanted to do. I, none of us as residents wanted to spend the hours that we're spending on this. Um, it's just that we have no other option. And that will be a request to the county commission. We have no other option and public safety is an issue. Okay. And where I was coming from was more <laughs> on the, the, the deadline, the self-imposed, you'd like to get it done by October just so that they, especially now with this uncertainty if you're going to be able to, how much success you the petition effort will have for who knows how. I think it's imperative that we have it done by October 1st, otherwise it puts Randall Township right. at a financial disadvantage um, in having to fund services while, while not collecting the tax revenue. Services while not collecting, but hopefully that's a short term issue that we uh, resolve. But we view that as a hard deadline. Thanks. Thanks for all your hard work. Okay. I need something to do. You have plenty of time. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments about the new township? We have a place to read the resolution. Yes. Yes. There's action. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. So uh, action item 11.01 is the mental health and recovery agreement. Um, second. Uh, so this is a um, another aspect of the funding mechanism that was available through the. Um, Student Wellness and Success Funds. So schools were allocated $675 million across the state. Licking, uh, or Mental Health and Recovery Boards were allocated another uh, couple million. And our, if we agree to work with the uh, Licking County Mental Health and Recovery Board, we have access to $23,000 um, for additional services or materials for professional development. So we have been working with Case Virgil uh, to uh, come to an agreement on what our plan would be to utilize those dollars. So, um, I'm asking for your support. Any questions? I, I'd say my experience working with, with the Mental Health and Recovery Board has been outstanding, and I think it'll be, yeah, we'll find it very easy to work with them. Thanks. Thanks, Yeah. And plus, they're really good. They, they like distributing funds. Yes. 
They don't want to sit on it. So I think that's terrific. Yeah. Hey, Thrombley? Yes. Mr. Miller? Aye. Mr. Wolf? Aye. Ms. Shaw? Aye. Dr. Foreman? Aye. Thank you. 11.02 is the agreement with the Columbus Council on World Affairs for the 2020-2021 school year. So moved. Second. Uh, this is our annual agreement with the Columbus Council on World Affairs for the Global Scholars Program. Um, we have about 75 students that will participate in that process. And remember, last year we added a $50 per student fee to offset this um, expenditure. Any questions? All right, Mr. Miller? Aye. Mr. Wolf? Aye. Ms. Deeds? Aye. Ms. Shaw? Aye. Dr. Foreman? Aye. Uh, item 11.03 is the GES roof project. So moved. Second. So uh, we anticipate um, we are doing two roof projects over at GIS. The first one is the white support building that we passed last last month. This is actually for the sunrise section um, of the main entrance. So anything to the right and back. Uh, we are replacing that entire roof for $89,000. And we're catching up. I see. Yeah, we're, we're, <laughs> yeah, you know, we're trying to get a lot of these roof projects done. If you think about it, we've spent a lot of money on roofs recently. But that's asphalt. That asphalt. That's which, is, which are both things that we've had to put off. Right? Correct. And it, it kills you, right? Because you yeah. put those off for longer and longer, and you have more problems. Mm -hmm. You have more, have more raptor problems. More, and more leaks and stuff like that. So yes. finally, we're getting back up on top of this, and hopefully, it's maintaining it at a certain level will be manageable. Absolutely, right. yes. Can you all remind me how old is GS? What was about? Well, which section? Yeah. So <laughs> the, the original, original. The original section is fifty-three. I think. What's that? I think it's fifty-three. Yeah, fifty-three, okay. and then the. Back section off of Sunrise, I believe, was in the 90s, late 80s, early 90s. Okay, maybe you need yeah. So, both in that one? Older. Item is the resolution of support. So moved. Second. And I would uh, ask the president to read the resolution. Um, the Board of Education of the Granville Exempted Village School District, County of Licking County, Ohio, met in a regular board meeting at 6.30 p.m. Oh, sorry, that's not the resolution. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we did meet, and yes, we did. <laughs> so the resolution supporting the grassroots effort to conform um, the Granville Township boundary to Granville School District boundary. Whereas the Union Township trustees have decided to form their own fire district to service the Union Township residents that reside in the Granville School District bo school boundary. Whereas the newly formed fire district will have potentially longer response times and a lower level of service providers to our school district residents. Whereas the Granville schools have daily routes of school buses that are ri at risk in the unfortunate possibility of an accident or in the need of fire and EMS services. Whereas the new fire district has not presented a service plan or budget that demonstrates an adequate level of respons responsiveness to the community. Now therefore be it resolved by this Granville Exempted Village School Board of Education that this board supports the effort of Union Township residents that reside within Granville School's boundary to conform the Granville Township to align to the Granville School boundary. Be it further resolved that the treasurer is hereby authorized and directed to forward copies of this resolution to all Granville Township trustees, Union Township trustees, Granville Village Council, and the Licking County Commissioners. Any additional questions about the, about the resolution and the issue? No? Okay. Aye. Mr. Miller? Aye. Mr. Wolf? Aye. Ms. Shaw? Aye. Dr. Foreman? Aye. Thank you. 
Next item is 11.05. Uh, I'm asking for your authorization to enter into a contractual agreement with Ohio Guidestones for mental health services. So, so, so we have gone through a relatively exhaustive process trying to find the right fit for kind of that relationship of the mental health service providing uh, for next year, and we believe Ohio Guidestone um, is the right fit. They have the ability to scale um, either direction that we ask them and provide a lot of professional development. And uh, we're excited about this partnership. Um, so I want to be able to enter into finalization of the contractual agreement with an understanding that the rev or the funds that we will be using will be the funds that were allocated by the governor's office through the student wellness and success funds. This will not be Granville taxpayer dollars that were collected through any way. This is separate. So I wanted to make that point. Do you have a magnitude? What's the financial numbers here associated with this? So we have a, a general frame for it could be $100,000 in the first year. However, what that would equate to as far as what we would pay is roughly 55%. What they're going to be doing is setting up an office that can build within our school district. So for the most part, they will try and build um, private insurance because we have parents that do have private insurance. And if not, then we would be potentially subsidizing some of those services from a consultation standpoint and a service for providing. Then we're also going to be um, paying for some of the professional development that they're offering. So we think that in the first year, we're going to be spending about 55000 almost half. And we have funds over two, two years. We have funds for as many years as we want to stretch for it as they last. So it's a, we have a set amount of money? Yes. That we, can... so we have $94,000 this year. We have $153,000 next year. And there's a commitment from the current governor to replicate that, that funding again in the next uh, biannual budget. So with what we have allocated now, we could go yes. for four years. Four or five years, yes. depending on, um, yeah. Correct, yep. We're gonna try and maximize the dollars. May I ask a question about the agreement? If, if, uh, if they do an assessment and make a recommendation, is Ohio Gu Guidestone gonna, are they gonna steer them towards Guidestone or will an individual have individual the have, will have direction. direction. If they don't have a, a specific provider, Guidestone can obviously use uh, their resources to support, but it is going to be much like we have Ohio State here that provides athletic training. But if a person wants to go to a different orthopedic surgeon, you know, that's up to their discretion. Uh, but if Ohio State can fulfill that need, fantastic. Uh, so it really is, it's not a hard sell. That's good to hear. That's a good reference to have the training model because I think that's worked very well for us. I know our athletic trainers do a great job of supporting, you know, wherever services are provided in the best way. I think it's going to be sort of a challenge to us or something that you should probably monitor in this process, having a, a provider that has incentive or has revenue that they can generate from our students, right, and how that balances between, you know, general support for our students and professional training of our staff that they wouldn't be compensated for in the same way. So I think that's just something to keep our eyes on. Yeah. Sure I, I, I agree. I, but I think the way that we're setting this up is really for it to be more of a triage bridge type model as opposed to a long-term mm -hmm. care model. So, I mean, the goal is for them to move the child into more of a long-term care if that's what's working. I think take some pressure off our staff. Yes. Because right now they're the front line. Correct. And not necessarily, I mean, they do a great job, to, you know, to the extent that they are trained and, you know, have to look out for these things on top of everything else that they have to do. Yeah. So I think it's a, it's a support that will be um, beneficial to. It has been on their number one list of things that they would like to see happen in Granville schools for at least four years. I mean, all staff. Yes. So, I think this is hitting the and it's been a high priority for the board as well. Yes. It's really been great to see the other organizations and government entities setting up this in this way. Agreed. With, with 
with the funding that the state has dedicated to these wellness funds, how is it allocated amongst districts relative to enrollment or relative wealth and so forth? In a similar way that general education funding is? Yeah, so it's, uh, it's there's different like quintiles based on wealth, and then that breaks down into a per pupil amount, with a minimum of each district getting like 25,000 or their per pupil, whichever is greater. So I think it's $20, $20 this year and $30 <coughs> next year. Yeah, every day is based on our and numbers. Using our but, student count from last year, because we're right. still. Well, I guess I'm just not used to getting more money from the state <laughs> for anything, right? And so I'm appreciative that they understand what an important issue this has been, and, and they've heard that community and the residents of Ohio speak up about it and found a mechanism to make that happen. And I think we're doing the right thing to try and appropriately step into this. Right, and if there's more that needs to happen that we identify through these roles or through others, you know, I, I'm very open to other creative solutions, especially like this, that can shift cost and, you know, impact a lot of students. I just want to be really clear, though, you know, the state did flat fund us, too. Yeah. So, <laughs> it, that's it, what I'm used to. It, it, yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're used to that. So, as much as, yeah. yes, yeah. I think this targets a very yeah. specific need, yeah. something that Governor DeWine has been yeah. an advocate for. for a great step in the right direction. I, I think we also have to continue to advocate for a solid funding funding model moving forward and not lose sight of the fact that we need to continue that advocacy. And we will continue that advocacy. Do we know where we're going to house this person? They will be in the middle school, high school complex. Okay. But all four buildings will have? Will have access to the, yes. Okay, uh, the consent agenda is um, 12.01 A through D and the addenda.
I know it's, it's the same outcome or whatever, yeah. but without being confusing. So really, um, all of them are a resignation. The only one that's not a resignation is Sue, right. Sue Owen, who is a retirement. Yeah. Yes. So we can amend that. Can I ask a question about the supplemental contracts? Yes. <laughs> what What happens if, for some reason, we don't have spring sports? We have not decided that um, administratively yet. Okay. So we wanted to hire them um, in case, for some reason, after three week or three weeks off, we have the ability to have some type of uh, um, season. But that is on the list to discuss probably again tomorrow. Because I just don't, I would prefer us not spending money if we don't have to. Um, Non-existent. Right. Well, we are approving them, and we have to um, determine if there is no season. What we do as far as that contract, because if they don't work that season, they haven't fulfilled the contract. But so they've fulfilled some of it early. Yeah. They, they once yeah they, they are all I'm not trying to open yeah. Pandora's box. No, it is Pandora's box. I mean they have done some work already, but um, I don't think it's appropriate for us to not hire them formally and potentially ask them to work at some point and then have to retroactively I think we need to proactively put them on the agenda, approve them, and then address that issue if they don't yeah, that's. Fine. I just wanted yeah. to mention it no, because I, it, it's a, and I, I didn't we debate it back and forth. Work. We debated back and forth. Yeah, and it's and we don't know yet, and I realize that, and you know, like lots of these things, we kind of have to do with them on the fly as they. So yeah. what what swung it for me personally was that they still have the ability to contact their students and provide you know guidance via no contact rules. Okay. So I didn't really want a person that was not board approved interacting with our students. Right. So you know, no, I think I, yeah, I, we, I think yeah. better safe than sorry. And but we will have to face that. So you'll at some point you'll hear back from me on that issue. Very good. It's been interesting. It's great having you know uh, students that have coaches and things like that to see how they're transmitting you know workouts and things like that and what they're suggesting in terms of, you know, running with friends or what not, or, you know, it's been interesting to see that I think the coaches have a really great opportunity as well, you know, as we all do, to stay in touch, right, and to find touch points and to help kids not just sit around home, <laughs> right, during these times, to find ways to be physically active, right, although we're not doing competitive sports right now together, right, to see what the coaches come up with in a creative mode sure. that helps out during these times. I'm being very facetious, we still have Josh Duval, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. With all these yes. we resignations and new hires. Yes. <laughs> that is fantastic, yeah. right? And it's a, there's a lot of stuff you have to communicate in there and so forth that's sort of required, but it's clear that his leadership and all the coaches standing around in that meeting that haven't always even participated before. All the coaches were there helping out, right? And all the coaches were there with the same message. And I credit a lot of that to Josh's leadership. And so I'm just very thankful to have this in the district. I, I know you would appreciate those kind yeah, make sure you pass them along. Thank you. Yeah, I will. Anything else? Any other questions? Comments? Thank you all. Ms. Fishaw. Aye. Mr. Wolf. Aye. Ms. Seeds. Aye. Mr. Miller. Aye. Dr. Foreman. Aye. Okay, that brings us to finances. Item 13.01, approval of the February 2020 financial report. So moved. Mr. Miller? Aye. Ms. Eads? Aye. Mr. Wolf? 
Excuse me. Aye. Ms. Shaw? Aye. Dr. Foreman? Aye. Okay, item 13.02, uh, resolution authorizing payment and mode of transportation. So moved. Second. This is an annual resolution that authorizes us to make payments to parents um, for students attending Marburn Academy and Grace Christian School um, when transportation is um, not feasible. Uh, for, yeah. Uh, and the parents provide transportation. Why are students attending Grace Christian School? I understand uh, Marburn, but what was. So we are required to provide transportation even to Christian schools. So if, if they choose to do that, um, then we have to provide transportation. What we have, this one specifically, we have deemed impractical. So there's a criteria that the state of Ohio outlines for deeming it impractical. And so we, that's the first step, we deem it impractical. Then the second step is you authorize to pay it. So we always deem them impractical. So it's a resident student chooses to attend. Yes. Right. Yeah, just an under I did not realize that we pay transportation or provide or pay transportation for Grace Christian. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Attending education. Yes. yes. Correct. Yeah. Charter or interesting. I thought it was the special needs situation for Marvin. Yeah. 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 Aye. Ms. Shaw? Aye. Mr. Wolf? Aye. Mr. Miller? Aye. Dr. Foreman? Aye. <coughs> Item 13.03, the then and now resolution. So moved. Second. Uh, two items for your approval. Uh, one for Lucas, Lucas truck sales for bus repairs and the second one for transportation to Kings Island. Just a quick explanation of what them now are. Yes, so these are items that the purchase order was dated after um, an invoice, and when that amount exceeds $3,000, it has to come to the board for approval. So we are definitely paying for it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we are definitely paying for the trip to Kings Island and that transportation regardless of what happens because of the invoice? So we've already paid it, um, so this would be a matter of
4,500 or 5,000. You know, it's good that we're we're having that impact, and that was because of our relationship with the app. Yeah. That I think they have rethought and tried to make um, our parents whole. But we use a lot of different providers, but it is something that we need to talk about moving forward because I think this might be more of the norm than we'd like to think um, when it comes to foreign travel. And many of those providers we've been with for a long time. Yes. Right, and we would love to be with in the future as well and so yeah. forth. And I think that parents would be very supportive of these kinds of things, you know, the support of the providers, and hopefully you can pass that along to them with your yeah. conversations with them. Okay. Will do. <laughs> So a couple of 
items. We are aligning the um, fund for the athletic complex to include the entire amount. We're missing um, one component of the budget, so we're aligning with the, that whole uh, scope. Uh, the second item, we'll be receiving a donation from the athletic boosters, um, and so our process has kind of been that they donate the money to us and then we make the purchase for certain items so that it's tracked appropriately on our fixed asset side. Um, and then we received our final auxiliary payment for Granville Christian Academy, so we've, uh, they receive funds from the state through us. So um, that payment comes three times throughout the year, so in February we received their final allocation, so we've actually reduced their budget down to align with what their total allocation is for the year. So, so motion to move into executive session to prepare for negotiations or bargaining sessions with public employees concerning their compensation or other terms and conditions of their employment. So moved. Second. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That was really Thank you. All right. So I, I'd like to just stay 